Hello Toronto, we're here today at the Cheese Boutique with Afreem, who is the only mas cheese master in Canada and you were, current, you were the youngest person to ever get this designation. I was. And as a result of that, we've become very good friends with you over the years and we now source almost all of our cheeses at the Healthy Butcher from the Cheese Boutique. And we're very honored and proud. Thanks. We like working with like-minded people, right? So we, uh, this is a relationship, as you know, that's been growing for many, many years and hopefully many, many years to come. So today we are going to work on making a perfect cheese tray. Um, now there's lots of different ways to go about doing this. Um, typically how many cheeses should somebody start with and what types? This is the thing, I think a good, I think something to remember when you're building a cheese board is definitely variety. And that's kind of the best part about cheese is there are so many different types and styles and flavors and goat cheese, cow's milk, blue cheeses. I think you want to cover almost a little bit of everything. Okay. And I, and I think the biggest thing is not actually complementing each cheese to each cheese, but actually contrasting them. Got it. And almost like cooking, I mean, you want to sweet and sour. So you kind of want to have flavors um, that really can hit a lot of different people's palates. Great. Okay, so we'll start with different kind of textures, something a little milder. Uh, this is a Brie de Mole. This is the original recipe for brie. So it's raw milk, it's one ripened uh, for about 60 days, really creamy. Uh, something to remember too when you're building your cheese board is you can build it an hour, two hours, three right. hours before your guests come over and then just let it sit out and really open up in flavor. Because pretty much all cheese you want to eat at room temperature, is that? Absolutely. It's like a really good bottle of wine. You want to take the cork out okay. and let it breathe a little bit. Cheese is very much Amazing. like that. So treat it like that. Amazing. So we have the Brie de Mole, which is kind of medium bodied. It's okay. almost mushroomy and like black truffle-y and just like really, it's got, uh, I call it the perfect amount of steak. Amazing. Okay. okay. Then we're going to do a mildest cheddar. Okay, so something, this is about three years old. This is one that you guys carry at the shop for many, many years. Yep. I think you want to like, for something like this, even break it down a little bit, more bite-sized pieces so people because can Because you don't kinda, want people with a knife to well, be fiddling think, with it? Or? I think you kind of want both, actually. Okay. I think you want to have something like this brie, just let it be, yep. leave a cheese knife there. Okay. I've, I've learned, Tara, over the years, when you put good cheese on a plate, people figure out how to eat it. Got it. So, but to have... <laughs> to have kind of the, the cheddar broken up. Oh, man down, that's uh, that's for me, I'll eat anything. Okay, so that's the three year cheddar. Um, mild dish, that perfect amount of acidity. It's kind of a cheddar, good for a lot of different palates. Okay. Then something a little bolder, a little sharper. I'm gonna break it up again, just like the last one. This is now 10 years, okay? And they're actually both from the same dairy in the Ottawa Valley that we deal directly with for since uh, I think we almost, get the five year cheddar. Yes, you do. Yeah. yeah. So you get the three, the five, and the yeah. ten, and they're all from the same dairy. And then okay. we age everything here on site at the shop and in our cheese cave. Oh, so they don't actually age it there. They, you get it really young. And we you age get it year. at a year, and then but we'll buy it in different stages, right? Course, so we'll yeah. age it to three and five yeah. and ten and so on. Amazing. So kind of bigger, bolder, and another thing to remember: definitely room temperature. But tell your guests kind of guide them into mildest to strongest flavors. Okay. And I'm kind of doing that and right now. And should you now. label them? Yes, definitely. I think um, we make really nice labels there. Um, and I think just kind of a little cue card, three-year cheddar, 10-year cheddar, okay. breed a mole. Okay. You don't need to write a whole history, but I think just something. So they so, know what they're... Because another thing too with building a cheese board, sometimes cheese can be intimidating. And, okay. and I hate that. And I, it's just a really humble food. So. Um, I think just you want to have something recognizable. Okay. Cheddars are recognizable, but just give the best quality of cheddar. Perfect. Okay. And then you're getting into some of the exciting stuff here. Right. Okay. So this is one. This is probably one of my favorite Ontario cheeses right now called Wild. I think it's Wood. my favorite one too. It's awesome. <laughs> like it's just nutty and almost like um not sugary uh, sugary sweet, but like fruity sweet. Yep. And it's actually aged and rubbed in charcoal, and it's made at Stonetown Dairy here in Ontario. So this is a rind you want to cut off, okay? Because okay, you can't eat that one. You can't eat this rind. Look, can you? Yes. But it's just not going to taste quite right. Right. Okay, so you can omit that. Almost make little kind of finger-sized pieces. Again, you're kind of seeing that, like, I'm cutting all the cheeses in different shapes. But is that really aesthetics as well? This is the best part about cheese is that it is aesthetically beautiful already. Cheese is yes. natural. It's fresh. It's looks amazing. Look at that, make almost like a little teepee. 
but again, it looks kind of different than everything else. So you're not it's got kind your of nice little piles. Yeah, and you're not mimicking <laughs> everything, so it's just kind of cubed and kind of boring. Right. So that's the wild wood. Uh, so I, I just want to recap. Yep. Cow's milk breed of mole, three year old cow's milk cheddar, 10 year old uh, cow's milk cheddar, both from Ontario, yep. and the Stone Town kind of Gruyere style called Wildwood. Okay. Then we're going to go to a sheep. Smell that. I actually, this is the cheese that, um, it's one of the first cheeses I've ever made, actually. So it's a pecorino. Yep. So pecorino um, in Italian, pecora in Italian means sheep. Sheep, yep. So this is a very traditional pecorino infused with fresh black truffle. Okay. This is Tuscan. Okay. So that very traditional salty, sheep's milk tends to be quite salty. So you want to have... It's fairly youthful though, so the older a pecorino gets, the saltier it gets. Okay. This is still pretty youthful, it's about Not four nice. months because you want the truffle to really be the star here. So it's called Boschetto, it's made at Il Fortetto Dairy in uh, Tuscany, one of the first cheeses I ever made many, many, many years ago. It's probably my favorite. <laughs> I, it's one of my favorites. This, great on a cheese board, but honestly, great in uh, scrambled eggs. You got, you got a little bit left that over from good. a cheese party. There's never a leftover cheese. Oh, God bless you then. God bless you. So then we're going to go to Wisconsin. Okay. And so we kind of have been all, all over the world now, right? We so have, we're in yeah. France, we're in Italy, Ontario, Ontario. We're going to go to Wisconsin and end up in Quebec. Another good thing about the variety. I like an international flavor. I'm very, very proud. Okay. I, I'm a proud Canadian. I'm a very proud um, seller of Canadian cheese because it's world class, not just because it's Canadian. But I like to kind of have a nice international selection. So this is the um, Prairie Sunset, it's called. And what's kind of cool, I'm gonna take a little nibble of that, Tara. It's really buttery. And um, it's made from Guernsey cow's milk. And Guernsey cow's milk has that kind of really rich, little buttery Good. flavor right on the back end. Even though it's about a year old, it's quite smooth on your palate and just kind of melts on your palate. And now, then there's just, something to be said about the orange too on the plate. Definitely. Like, like you want that splash of yeah, color, right? And that's kind of what I was going to say next. Okay. It's just, just a little bit of different color. Um, the dye in this in this uh, cheese is natural. They use the annatto seed. Okay. To, so it's not synthetic. So that orange is kind of natural. And to end, and again, just makes kind of the board pop, right? right. Yep. Last but not least, um, and again, we're eating these in this order as well. Okay. Okay, so however you want to arrange it when you're <laughs> Should stuck. they put number one, two, three as you go? But you totally can, and okay. I think that kind of makes it fun. So if you're pairing it with wine or beer right. or scotch you or... You tell people, like you said, if they're totally. a little totally. bit afraid of trying new cheeses, totally. it's, it's there for them, right? And this is kind of... Blue cheese is always one of those things you can do it, or you don't have to do it. I love putting blue cheese, again, for its aesthetics. Okay. But this is one you, uh, you guys carry. I think it's top five cheeses made on the planet. Okay. It's called Bleu d'Elizabeth. It's all organic farming. It's unpasteurized. It's a very clean kind of blue cheese. And doesn't, there's some blue cheeses sometimes that just kind of rip your taste buds out. And right. That's great. But it's not kind of for this everyone's cup of tea. This is so this a, is a one for everyone. Kind of. It's a very mild mannered blue. Don't have to do much. Look how beautiful that is. And when you start to see kind of see how it's a little green. Yep. That is awesome. That that is just a sign of maturity. That are that is all the oils okay. coming out naturally out of the blue veins. So just kind of right there. You have seven wicked cheeses, all very different from around the world. Now we need what I call kind of the training wheels, yep. right? So please, when you're making a cheese board though, cheese is a star. Okay. Okay, cheese is always the star. Everything I, else is second. Everything else is secondary, yep. but can complement, right? Okay. So sometimes I like water-based fruits, fresh grapes. Because they'll kind of right. cleanse your palate. Exactly, so while you're traveling through yep. cheese, which is just big and bold and salty and sharp, and it's fat, right? Like yep. you need, something to cut it down. So water-based fruits. Okay. So beautiful um, green grapes, figs. beautiful fresh yep. figs. Um, you can use apple, you can use pear. Okay. Again, water-based fruits with acidity. Never berries for me. Okay. So like strawberries, blueberries, I love. 
but they have too much sugar. What about nuts? Nuts are great too. Toasted okay. almonds okay. or toasted pecans are great too. Yep. Uh, here at the shop, uh, we make a beautiful truffle honey. Okay. So like for even like the blue where it's salty, sweeten it up with the truffle honey, right? And you get that kind of nice, everyone loves truffle, right? So a beautiful everyone little cup. Everyone loves honey too. Everyone loves honey too. And in terms of bread or crackers, what's your, what's your thought? Up to you. Always have an option for gluten-free. Okay. Definitely. I'd say baguette, like nice crusty baguette. Something simple. So Something taste the flavor. A of. neutral, a neutral cracker, okay. a neutral bread, gluten-free. I think is always a good option. Yep. So you have a sweet component. Okay. Correct. You have yep. the water-based fruits. This is more kind of savory. So this is a, a caramelized onion chutney okay. with aged balsamic that that we make here at the shop. And this again, good with the aged cheddar, but really, really tasty and a different consistency than the truffle honey. And then last but not least, and just to kind of add a little bit of color, I love flowers. Okay, I get now those that. are probably edible though, These right? are Can edible I flowers. Those from my garden and absolutely. Just tell not to eat them. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, but absolutely, right? Or honestly, some beautiful mint or okay. like basil or, right. or, or sorrel. Something just, fresh for the it, summertime. Right? Exactly. Or, and I think it just gives the connotation that, you know, yep. cheese is beautiful, but you know, let's make it even more beautiful, right? It's like, amazing. Like, and, and, and what about knives? Like, should everything have their own separate knife? I don't think so. Okay. I mean, you don't have to I worry mean, about it. At that point, people just dig in and it, away you go. Exactly. Right? I think if you had maybe a knife for the creamy one, right. it can be a butter knife, right? It doesn't yeah. have to be, you don't have to go invest in crazy cheese knives. A butter knife for the blue, yep. okay? A butter knife for the for the brie. And then everything else you can kind of pre-cut like I did and let the guests help okay. themselves. One last question. Yeah. Um, we tend to eat cheese a lot while people are coming over and we're kind of waiting for everyone at dinner. And a lot of people say you should not do that because it kind of spoils. You. People eat too much cheese and it will spoil the dinner. Yes. So, I mean, do you have thoughts on, like, this is amazing. It's a big portion. Should you save this for the end and put it out as your dessert? Or, I Honestly, mean, is there a big, I think, the rules? so <laughs> this is where my Italian roots come into play. Okay. So I'll answer this question as an Italian. Okay. Put it out at the start and you'll see that people will kind of nibble at it throughout your lunch, throughout right. your dinner. Right. So it's almost like Italians have like big lunches, right? Yeah. Three hour lunches. So put that out at the start. By the end of it, it'll be gone. And God bless the Italians. They eat cheese as a digestive so they can eat we more. cheese all the time. I know, I know. <laughs> so, they, but, but, so they can eat more pizza, pasta, yeah. steaks, whatever it is. But I honestly think I'm kind of with you. You could put this out as an appetizer starter, you could just make this and leave it out as a dessert. I think it can go both okay. ways. And in terms of cheese selection, I don't think it really matters, right? Okay. Like I think um, you start off with your white wine, great, no problem. We have white wines to kind of pair with them, yeah. or like a really fresh acidic beer. Then kind of in the later evening, you're onto your red wine or like fortified and wine. And people would eat more of the heavier ones. Right. Amazing. So I think there's... The biggest thing for me, honestly, I don't think there should be rules. I think I'm just kind of giving guidelines. Okay. Make it fun. I think make it fun, make it a lot of variety, and just kind of put the appropriate garnish and let really the cheese be okay. the star. One last question. Yes. Because we are doing a video for the Healthy Butcher. Yes. What about mixing charcuterie on there? Absolutely. It's fine? Absolutely. I think one or two cured meats. Yeah. Kind of drape Some maybe salami. a prosciutto, a salami. Yeah. I wouldn't go anything too spicy though. Okay, because then you don't want to ruin the flavors of the Yeah, okay. and, and vice versa, right? Like, I don't want to ruin the, the, yeah. the, the flavor. You guys have awesome cured meat, so I think a nice bit of a, a kind of draped prosciutto here yep. and a little mild fennel sausage or something like that I think is great on the Amazing. plate too. All right, Toronto, you got it from the master himself. Perfect cheese plate, and it's perfect time for lunch, so I'm going to dig in. It's all yours. My pleasure. My pleasure. Thank you. Cheers.